Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're going to talk about how to create Snake inside of Godot. So we're going to talk about how to plan out your code and how to plan stuff out and talk about how Snake actually works. Then we're going to go in and talk about how to properly spawn your Snake pieces. And then we're going to talk about how to move those pieces, how to detect collision when the object hits collides with another object we're going to talk about how to expand your snake and then we're going to talk about how to actually keep track of score and display your score at the end and allow you to press a button and replay the game so it serves as kind of a good introduction to how to create a very basic game right here inside of godot so with that being said let's go ahead and get started all right so the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually plan this out now as you guys know with most of my tutorials i don't really plan the code out before I plan it out, if that makes sense, before I start the tutorial. So this is gonna be me working through the problem with you guys. So first things first, we need to come up with a way to move our uh, snake, right? And we need a way to spawn our snake. So when we wanna spawn our snake, how in the world are we gonna do that? I think the best way to spawn our snake is actually going to be by looping through so we're going to say 4i in 3 because there are three um sections to a snake typically when you first start so we'll do that for i in 3 and then we'll kind of spawn a section and what that section is going to be is it'll be a character body so create character body and then we'll go ahead and come in and create a sprite so create sprite we'll need to assign that sprite and then we'll need to add it as a child so and then we'll need to do the same thing but for collision so if we just kind of grab these guys duplicate it bring it over here like so sign shape to collision and then we're also going to need to size this to bounds but i think when we create our collision shape we're going to assign it to bound because I think what we're gonna do is when we move our object, we're going to go ahead and uh, move it based off of like a constant value of some description. So first things first, we're gonna come in here, do this, then we'll create our sprite, assign that sprite, add it as a child, create our collision object. We'll come in, create a collision shape, assign it to the bounds of the object, and then assign it to the collision and then add it as a child and i think that's pretty much how we're going to handle spawning our snake i think that'll be the best way to handle this now typically in some form of uml you usually have a circle that says start and typically you have a circle that is your end so we'll just go ahead and grab this guy and do end like that so i think that's how we'll approach this pretty much and now when it comes to uh, moving our snake, what we'll do, so we'll go move snake. What we'll do is we'll loop through our objects. So, and basically we'll move them one unit. So move one unit to direction, which means direction is probably gonna have to be a global parameter of some description. And then we will go and get our get direction as well so we'll do this and then we'll probably have this guy here so we'll have a decision block all sections moved question mark and then we'll just kind of come in here and say yep if these guys all have moved then we can go ahead and get our direction and that basically will force us to uh, move our stuff based off of the last frame input. So we're going the opposite direction than moving it on the first frame input because we could get direction first and then move the object to that direction. But if we do it this way, it forces you to think one step ahead because your character is going to move one frame forward based on the direction before you can change their direction. So it kind of helps make you think a little bit deeper about what you're trying to do. And I think... That's pretty much all we're gonna do to move our snake. So when it comes to the next thing, which would be add add snake part, we'll put that up like that. Basically on collision with food, we'll go ahead and generate a snake part. So generate snake part, which is basically just this over here when we spawn our snake. 
except for it will just be like this little piece right and i know that this is not uml by the way i i understand but basically it's just going to be this bit of uml right here and that's going to link back to here i'm just putting that there so you guys see kind of what it's going to be it'll be this bit here this piece here will probably need to be a function because that's going to allow us to add our snake piece and that's primarily what we'll be doing is just this more or less i mean it'll be pretty simple and then we'll update our score like that and that should work. And then the last thing that we really need is how are we going to handle game over? And basically, when a snake collides with itself. So what we need to do is determine if the snake is going to collide with itself. And typically, we'll do that here in the move snake section. We'll get our direction. And then we'll determine if we pull this down like this and say, is head colliding with body question mark and if so then we'll game over and if not then we can just drop off to end there we go and then i'll just duplicate this guy and bring it down here and there we go and that's basically it for that and i probably should grab this little end piece here bring it over here drag, drag this guy down put this like that and then on game over display game over screen and then show score and then wait 10 seconds because we want to give them a bit of time then is button pressed and then if a button is pressed then we will restart the game and if not then we'll just wait and this will go into the top right here like so and then this will go here this will go here this will go here and then this will go here and then we're gonna drag in another end. So we'll copy that guy and put it right here. And there we go. And that's primarily all of the things that we need to build Snake. So with that being said, let's go ahead and build this. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually create our Snake. So we'll come in here, do a 2D scene. We're gonna right click, add a child node, and we'll add in another node 2D. And this is going to be our Snake right here. So we'll type Snake like so and what we'll do is we're going to spawn in what our snake is going to be so i'm going to right click attach a script i'm going to call it snake game controller like that and then i am going to go ahead and come into our ready and basically create our snake pieces so when you want to create a part of that snake, right? Because think about it this way, right? When you when you play snake, you have the, the snake and then the pieces that are trailing behind it, right? So typically when you start snake, you have three of them. So we'll say for I in three, because we want three of those. So for I in range three, colon, we'll go ahead and add a part. So I'm going to say var part is equal to, and I'm going to do a function called create part like that and this thing is going to allow me to create a part of that snake so when we want to create a part i'm going to come down here and say funk create part like that and i'm going to pass in two things i'm going to pass in a vector two so position colon we'll make that a vector two and then i will pass in a boolean which is going to be if it's a head so is head and we'll make that into a boolean like that now i'm going to pull these guys like this and p o s i t i o n position like that then i'm going to drop a colon right there to get our function ready to go so what we need to do to create our stuff is we need to create a character body because it's going to get moved via code we're going to have to have a character body. So we'll come in here and say var part is equal to character body 2d dot new like that. And then we can come in here and say part dot position is equal to position multiplied by some kind of value. So when you move your snake, think of it kind of like this. We have this entire world here right that we have and we need to divide this world up based on tiles okay because the whole world should be kind of squares if that makes sense so that way when we move our player they kind of move in increments if that makes sense 
So I'm going to come in here and have a value called tile size. So I'll say tile size like that. And I'm going to come up here and make a constant. So const tile size. And I'm going to make that tile size equal to 16. So it's going to be 16 units big, if that makes sense. We'll get back to create part. You'll see how it has an issue here. Don't worry. We'll, we'll get back, back to that once we get our create section finished here. So once we have this, we'll come in here and say var sprite is equal to sprite to D dot new. And now we're going to say sprite dot texture is equal to, and we can make it equal to something. And in our case, I'm going to preload our icon.svg. That's going to give us the Godot icon. Since this is just a tutorial, I don't have special pieces to go with here. So I just have no, I just have the Godot icon. So we'll say sprite.scale, and we're going to make that equal to a vector two. And we're going to go 0.2 comma 0.2. And the reason why we're doing all of this, so if I go back for a quick second, so we're spawning in our character body here because we're going to be moving it via code and we're setting it onto our grid and offsetting it on its position by tile size. That way we know exactly where it's going to be and it's going to be offset and perfect the way we want it to be. Then we're creating a sprite and we're loading it as an SVG. So we're grabbing this icon and bringing it into that sprite. And then we're setting the scale of our sprite to 0.2. And the reason why we're doing 0.2 is because of our tile size. So that's something to keep in mind. Now we need to add collision to that object because when the snake collides with itself or with other things, we need to know that that collision happened. So we'll say var collision shape is equal to collision shape to d dot new like that. And then we'll say var shape is equal to rectangular shape to d dot new like that. And then we'll say shape dot extents is equal to vector two. And we need to do a little bit of math here. So we want the extents of our shape. So our rectangular shape, which is our collision shape, we want that to be equivalent to our tile size divided by two. So we'll say tile size divided by two comma tile size divided by two. And basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna make it be the perfect size for our tile. So it'll now take up a full tile size. So the reason why we're doing the tile size divided by two is because the extents of a shape is defined from the center of the edge. So basically, if you were to specify it just tile size, it would be double the size. So we kind of have to divide it by two so that way it keeps that proper size and it keeps its origin, if that makes sense. So now we'll say collision shape dot shape is equal to our shape like that. And then part dot add child and we'll add in that collision shape like that. And then we'll add child part and then we will return part and that'll return our object. And now up here, we need to actually, now that we have that part returned and we have everything working the way we expect, what we need to do is we need to set up where this stuff is going to be located. So I'm going to say vector two minus I comma zero. And that's going to basically offset everything back one step, if that makes sense. And then I'm going to pass in I is equal to zero like that. So now once we have our stuff spawning properly, we need to come in and move that stuff. So we have a process function here. So we'll go ahead and grab that. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to say, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to handle uh, movement speed, if that makes sense. So we'll have a timer. So we'll say move timer is equal to plus equals Delta. And then we'll say if move timer is greater than or equal to, and we'll need to have a move delay. So we'll say move delay like that. Then we can go ahead and move our snake. So I'll just have move snake like that. And I'll come up here and I'll say move timer is equal to zero like that. And then I'll come up here and I'll go ahead and create these functions. So var move timer which will make equal to zero and then var 
or I guess in this case, it's going to need to be a const. So we'll come up here, move delay, and I'll go ahead and make that move delay 0.15, I think. And I think that's going to give us a good number right there. And now we just got to create a function for moving our snake. So we'll say func move snake like that. And I'll go ahead and pass. Now we also need to handle our input and typically it's up to you on what you want to do or how you want to approach it. But basically when we get our input, you can either create a handle input function or you can go ahead and just handle input manually. So here I'll just go ahead and handle input manually just so that way we have it handled. So we'll say if input dot is action just pressed and I'm going to do UI up And then we'll need to go ahead and set our direction, but we don't actually have a parameter for direction yet. So let's go ahead and create that parameter. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to create a parameter. So var direction is equal to a vector to one comma zero. And that'll basically set us to have a direction. So the character is always moving on the X axis one towards the right so that way we can actually um, have the character moving without pressing anything and then we'll just say direction is equal to vector 2 0 comma minus 1 and that's going to make it go up if that makes sense and now I'm just going to copy this guy here and I'm going to paste paste and paste we're going to say UI down UI left, UI right, like that. And then I'll basically just do this. So on down, it's going to be this. On left, it's going to be zero. And I believe it's minus one, if I remember correctly. If I remember Godot's cardinal directions. And then one and zero, like that. And then we need to actually be able to move our snake. So let's go ahead and move our snake. Now you'll see I'm doing this after the movement and that's basically stops the player from being able to change the direction of the snake on the beginning of the frame versus the end of the frame. So if you're late on moving it, then you fail. You can't uh, get yourself out of a bind as easily, if that makes sense. So when we're moving our snake, all we need to do is we're going to come up with what our next position is. We're going to store that in memory so that next frame it can apply, if that makes sense. So what we'll do is we'll say var next position is equal to, and now we've walked into kind of a, a struggle spot here. How do we move each one of our different snake pieces? We're spawning them right, right here, but we need a way to reference them. And that's where storing each piece in memory is an important part of this code here. So we'll come in here and say var snake body is equal to bracket bracket. And then we'll come in here and just say snake body dot append and we'll append our part. And that's going to add it to that snake body. And I'm going to go ahead and save. Now, that means down here, we can actually call out those parts. So first things first, we'll go snake body bracket bracket zero dot position plus direction multiplied by our tile size. Like that. And you'll notice that I'm multiplying up by the tile size. So why is that? Well, when we're working with everything in a tile based system, remember we have a cardinal directions, right? So you have stuff like this where it's something like this, right? When we multiply it by our next position, we're effectively forcing the player to go in one spot. So it's going to take the head and go from here to here. So it's going to guarantee that it's going to be in the proper position. Cause if you allow it to go, not, um, in a grid, then it's going to make the uh, snake game a lot harder to control, if that makes sense. So that's why we're doing it this way. That's why we have that tile size. So now we'll just say for I in range len snake body minus one comma zero minus one. 
And you might be wondering what this is doing. Well, basically what I'm doing is I'm getting the length of my snake. I'm going down by one. Or I'm cutting it down by one. So I'm minusing one from here. So that minuses my head. I'm starting from zero and I'm going backwards. Does that make sense? So basically I'm going from the tail to the head. So I moved the head and now I'm moving the tail forward all the way up to the head if that makes sense you could go the opposite direction but this is kind of how i wanted to approach it because i felt like this was going to be a better solution because it moves each body part to the position of the previous one versus moving them all to the next position if that makes sense so we'll say snake body bracket bracket i dot position is equal to snake body bracket bracket i minus one dot position and the reason why we're doing it this way is because now we can make it move exactly where the previous snake's position was so everything goes to that previous position if that makes sense and then i'm going to move the head itself so snake body bracket bracket zero dot position is equal to next position and that'll force that snake head to move to the next position and in theory hopefully this should just work so we should be able to just hit play and let's see what it does and you'll notice that nothing seems to happen and the reason why is because if we come down here i believe yep i made a mistake right here we need to actually add this sprite as a child so part dot add child sprite that gives us the ability to see it so we'll refresh and there we go. We have a very basic snake. Now, something you'll notice that we can go left and right and it can just work. So that's not great. So it means we can go up and down, right? And it's totally fine. So that means we're going to have to keep track of which position our snake is because we don't want to allow our snake to be able to go back and forth like this. That's not really acceptable. So what we'll do is we'll just handle that right here. We'll say, if direction uh, or if input just pressed is up, then we do our direction, right? So what we could do is say, if this and, or we could type and, it's up to you guys, direction does not equal and we'll grab our UI down direction. So this guy right here, like so. And then we'll just copy this guy, paste like so and go minus one and then go like this and then go, I believe this one is one and zero and then this one is minus one and zero. All right, now let's go ahead and try this. Down left and, yep, left doesn't work, up doesn't work, right doesn't work and down doesn't work. So that's perfect. So now it works exactly like you would expect snake to work. And there you go. Awesome. So now that we have that working, now we just have to create the rest of the game, which is not that bad. It's really just creating a part, adding parts, growing your snake, adding in a game over state and adding in food. So hopefully that should be relatively easy. So now all we need to do is make it so we can make our snake bigger. So when you run over a piece of food, you're basically going to tell the game to make the snake larger, right? So how do we make the snake grow? Well, all we need to do is on collision of food, grow snake, right? Well, yes, that's pretty much what we need to do. But how do we grow our snake? Well, first things first, we'll make a function to do that. So we'll say func grow snake like that. And then what we'll say is var last part position is equal to snake body bracket, bracket, minus one dot position. And that'll go ahead and pull back our last piece of our snake. Then we'll say var new part is equal to create part, last part position minus false. Now, technically we don't need to do this right here. We could just do this. And that would save us this line of code. It's up to you. It's dealer's choice there, but it is something that we can do. So now all we need to do is append to our snake. So snake body dot append, and we'll append our new part like that. And then if we have a score right here would be where we would append our score. So we'll do that later, but we'll say append score. 
And if we want to speed up the game, we could speed up the game right here. So move delay is equal to move delay multiplied by 0.95. Now this is no longer a constant. So technically this should not be possible, right? So we could come in here and just say, move delay like that. And then we'll just have to change up our code right here. So we'll change this from const to var, and then we'll just do this. Move delay, move delay, move delay, like that. And now, once we change our move delay, we're pretty much good to go. This is really all it takes to actually append to your snake. It's that simple. Now we just need to make it so that we can append to our snake, right? So we need to actually collide our snake's head to something and then allow it to grow our snake, right? So how are we gonna do that? Well, it's actually really easy. First, we need to create a candy, right? We need to create our um, actual piece of food. So let's right click our node 2D, let's add in a child node and let's add in a piece of food. So we'll just grab in a area 2D and we're gonna make that area 2D into a piece of food. So I'm gonna name this as food. Like so, I'm gonna right click, add in a child node. We're gonna add in a sprite 2D, like so. And we'll go in and right click, add in a child node. Let's add in a collision shape 2D, like that. Now, you could go about doing this the other way, which was what we did before, right? Where you go in and you set it to uh, get built in code and things like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just gonna show you guys both ways of doing this. So that way you have control over what you guys want to do. So you'll see here, we have a sprite. I'm gonna make that an icon SVG right here. I'm gonna make this transform 0.25 because that is the size of our tile size. So we'll make that 0.25. And then our collision shape here, I'm gonna make that into a rectangular shape. Now you'll see that this is potentially too big or too small. It's going to be a 32 by 32, like so, because that's about the size of a single tile. And now we'll go ahead and grab this food, drag it down. We'll call it food.tscn. We'll right click, add in a script here, and we'll go ahead and call it food.gd. Now I'm gonna click on this guy. That's gonna open up our food script here. I'm gonna go ahead and actually get rid of this. This is my fault. So we'll get rid of this. We'll come into here. We'll drag our food.gd into this. We're gonna go over here on area enter and we will select that guy right there. Now with our food, it's relatively easy. We have to place our food and then we need to detect collision. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna come in here and say const tile size. We're gonna make that equal to 16, the exact same so tile size that the rest of our stuff is set up for. So now I'm going to place my food. So placing your food, placing your food is relatively easy. We'll say var x is equal to, we'll say position is equal to vector two bracket rand i underscore range zero comma 40 multiplied by tile size like that and then we'll go comma and the exact same thing literally the same code except for we're going to go with 30 instead of 40. so we'll say 30. and that should be it and actually now that i'm thinking about this we're going to need to detect the body collision not the area collision so let's disconnect this method and on body entered right here and so what I'm gonna do here is we'll, you'll see we'll get a body node 2D. So anytime a body collides with us, we'll know who it is, right? It's our snake. So we'll say body dot get parent dot grow underscore snake, because we know that our snake is going to need to grow when we hit the thing. And then we can basically spawn a new candy. Now we don't have a way to spawn a new candy yet, but we'll type Q free right here. And we'll go ahead and just basically comment here, spawn candy. Pretty simple, right? So now if we come into our node2d here, we drag our food in like so, which I should have done to begin with, but that's okay. 
and we'll kind of drag it over here. If I hit control S and I hit play, you should see it. There is a piece of candy here. If we hit it, it should grow us, but it's not non-existent grow snake in base snake game controller. And that's probably because I did grow snake without the underscore. So we'll go ahead and paste that and let's try that one more time. So we'll go after that piece of food right there. And you'll see that we grew by one piece right there. Now we are four pieces. So awesome. Now we just need to make it so we can spawn our candy. So what I'm going to do is get parent dot spawn candy like that. And that's going to force it to spawn a piece of candy or spawn at least the next food piece for the snake. So I'll come up to our node 2D, right click attach script. And for the script title, I'm just going to call it snake game like that. And this is basically just going to be our actual game controller, if that makes sense. And inside of here, it's going to be relatively simple. We'll say at export var food and we're going to say pack scene like that and basically that's going to give us a reference point for us to be able to spawn our stuff and now i'm going to say funk spawn candy now when we spawn our candy we cannot just spawn candy out of nowhere in the middle of a frame godot gets really confused about this we need to call deferred so we'll say call deferred and we'll go ahead and call some kind of deferred method. So I'm going to say spawn candy, spawn candy deferred like that. And then I'll go ahead and come in here and say funk spawn candy deferred. And we'll go ahead and say var. And we'll come in here and say add child food dot instance like that. And that'll just instantiate our food and place it somewhere randomly. So now if we hit play, you'll notice that we actually have a game on our hands. Now I might need to make our stuff a little bit smaller, but you can see when I hit them, well, it's not happy. Cannot call instantiate on null value. That's my fault because you can see here, we never set our food value. When we do an export like this, it will actually put it right here. So that way we can drag our food into there and save us some of that trouble. So now if I do this, you'll see there's my food. We'll head over here, grab it. And there we go. Nice. So we actually have a game on our hands. Now we are expanding by one each time and our food is doing its thing. And if we want to change the distance that this guy can spawn, you'll notice that we're not getting very many that are way over here on the right that's because of our x value it's probably not far enough so we probably need to adjust it because it should be going all the way over here but it's not but you'll also notice if we want to kill ourselves i can just go through myself and it doesn't seem to care right so we're going to need to fix that because obviously we don't want to allow us to just run through ourselves right so what do we have to do to handle that well that's relatively simple all we need to do is come into our snake game controller here and handle that specific use case. So what we'll do is we'll check for self collision. So we'll come over here to our move snake section here and we'll basically just say if for I in range one comma length snake body like that, if snake body bracket bracket zero dot position is equal to our snake body bracket bracket I dot position. Then we can just go ahead and trigger a game over. So we'll just say game over like that. So what does game over mean to us? And this is an actual question. I don't have an answer for you guys. A lot of times people show the leaderboard. A lot of times people reset the game, things like that. I think what I'll do is I'll put it in my parent here into my snake game. So we'll say get parent dot game over. And then we'll come into our snake game here and we'll create a function like that. And when we do a game over, we'll go ahead and print game over and then we'll say get tree dot 
reload current scene. And that's just going to reload the game so you start over. So now, if it doesn't break, R-A-N-G-E, that's my fault. So we'll fix that real quick. And you'll see if I grab this guy like this, and then I grab one more, because you have to have about four for this to work properly. So we'll do that. And then it starts over just like that. See, now we have our stuff. We do have a thing that says game over, and it looks like we might have some kind of error. It looks like we can't add a state while flushing queries. So we'll have to look at that later but at least we have a game. It's something that's going on, right? It's an actual game at this point. So now we just need to actually keep track of our score. And you'll notice that I made a few adjustments here just to let you guys know, so you guys are aware. I changed this to 75 and this to 50. That should give our food a bit more uh, space to breathe as we move around. So I just grabbed that while I was sitting here thinking about how to handle the game over section of this. So once you hit game over, we need to uh, kind of display their score, right? So how can we actually do that? Well, if we go into our snake game controller, we could actually probably just do it in our snake game section. Now I'm thinking about it. So I'll come up here in our snake game and I'll say var score and we'll make that equal to zero. Now we need to actually handle our score. So I'm gonna come up here, right click, add a child node. I'll add in a label like so. And I'm gonna make that label go into the upper right hand corner of our screen. So we'll go ahead and drag this guy like so. You'll see that this also was moved, this food piece. That's because I was just thinking about where I could possibly put everything. So I think I'll just put that there and we could always move our snake into the center of the screen. That way he starts off at the center of our screen. So I'll go ahead and hit save on all of those guys. And our label here, we'll just type score colon space. And we'll go ahead and just set that to zero actually. Now, if we go to our node 2D, we should probably have a func update score like that. And we'll go ahead and say dollar sign label which i'll rename to score label like that we'll copy this guy and i'll paste it onto here dot text is equal to score like that and what i'll do is i'll come in here and say score plus equals one and then this is equal to quote score colon space plus str score and that's basically going to enforce that this score is not going to be a um integer it will be a string value and we're going to go ahead and overwrite this score words with the word score that way everything just kind of sets up correctly and is good to go if that makes sense and now we can come into our snake game controller and when we run over a piece of food if i remember correctly we handle here, we say grow snake. So we'll go to our snake game controller and on grow snake, we'll say get parent dot update score like that. And then we'll go ahead and make our move delay slightly faster. And that should allow us to handle our score. So now if we hit play, you'll see we have a score of zero. If we go and fetch our piece of food here, you'll see that we get score of one and there's two and three and there we go. So now everything seems to be working the way that I expected it to. And so now I just killed myself and you'll see that it says game over score zero, just like that. So now basically we have a very basic game and it actually keeps track of our score as expected. Now, all we have to do is when you die, we're going to pop up game over in the middle of the screen and we'll hit a press any key to continue. So if we go here, you'll see we have game over, print game over, and then get tree reload screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say if var game over. And we'll make that equal to a boolean like that and we'll say if if game over so we'll say if game over and 
input dot is anything pressed, then we'll go ahead and reload our scene like so. And then we can get rid of this and just say game over is equal to true. And we'll go ahead and set up some kind of game over screen here. So what I'll do is I'll right click, add a child node, label, and I'm going to make this at the center of the screen. I'll say game over. We'll go score colon. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this a nice and large. So we'll go to our theme overrides. We'll go with font size. We'll change this from one to something like maybe 131 is probably way too big. So we'll go with something like 75. And we'll make this the center of your screen. I'm going to duplicate this label, pull this down and I will do score. And I'm going to make that slightly smaller. So we'll come to theme overrides. We'll reduce the size to something like this. And we're going to need to center align this. So unfortunately, I don't think if I go bracket bracket center, it doesn't quite work. BB code doesn't work on these guys. So I might need to go horizontal alignment center and that's gonna center that. And then I'm gonna duplicate this guy, put this guy down here and say, press any key to restart like that. And I will make this nice and small. So we'll go to our theme override font size, and I'm gonna reduce this down to something like 20 or so. And that'll allow us just to show them that information. We'll right click, add a child node. We're gonna go ahead and add in a control node, and then we'll put these guys underneath that control node. And that will allow us a very nice, easy way to sh hide and show this. And I'm gonna make this game over. And then I'll call this game over label and then score label right here. Like that. And press any key. And then we'll come into here and I'll just come in here and say dollar sign game over dot sh show like that. And then I'll go dollar sign game over dot score slash score label dot text is equal to quote score colon space plus str and then we'll go with score like that simple enough and in theory this should just work so we'll try it so we'll go like this we'll get you know two or three of these guys so one two and I will kill myself. Oh, well it popped up for two seconds and then I hit a button. So that's my fault. So we'll go ahead and do this again. Maybe we should wait two seconds. Yeah. So it looks like we're going to need to wait. We're going to make a timer. So we're going to have to wait for a second because the game is immediately catching and saying, yep, it's, it's over. You've lost. But that's not going to work because on process, it happens so fast that it's borderline impossible for you to actually be able to see your score. So what we'll do is we'll give them a 10 second wait time. So what I'll do is I'll say var timer is equal to 10. And then I'll come into here and I'll say timer minus equals delta. And then I'll say and timer is less than or equal to zero. And in theory, that should just work. So we'll go ahead and do that and let's see what happens. So we'll do this, this, and one more, and we will see what happens if we kill ourselves. So now if we die, game over, score is three. And then you can see now I can actually move. Now we also want to on failure, on end, right? We don't want our snake to be able to move. So we're gonna to need to handle that. So we'll say process move timer delta the and then our delay right here. We'll say if get parent dot game over, then do this. Except for we don't want that. We want to say if it's not game over, then do this. So as long as we are not in a game over state, we're good to go. 
So now, in theory, if we die, which I can't quite kill myself that easily when we're this small, unfortunately. So we need to adjust this just a little bit. So let's go like that. And I, there we go. And you can see, game over, and I can't move at all. But, interesting, interesting. So there's a bug here. And that's because this, that makes sense. I'm stupid. So this is wrong. So we need to actually adjust this a little bit. Let's come in here and say, if game over, then this. And then if this is pressed, then do this. And the reason why I'm doing it this way, now that I'm thinking about this, is because you need to uh, make sure that if your game is in game over state, then the timer gets ran. The reason why that stuff was going on instantly was because we were counting down our timer at all times. And so it was always at zero on our first failure. And I think we could probably reduce this from 10 to something like five, and that's probably fine. So now if we hit play and we die, you can see it says game over, score is zero. Press any key to restart game over and you can see I'm hitting keys and it does nothing after five seconds I can actually once again do it and then if I die again game over score is one there we go so at this point you have a basic understanding of how to create snake inside of Godot so if you like this video go and hit that like button and hey you know if you dislike this video go and hit that dislike button because I am here to make content for you guys this video was a viewer suggested video so hey you know if you have any suggestions please leave them in the comments below or jump on my github link is in the description and go ahead and put a ticket in and i will be more than happy to take a look at it next up i believe i'm going to be talking about how to self-host your nakama instance because typically self-hosting is cheaper though there are a lot of caveats there that we're gonna to have to talk about so look forward to that and hey, you know, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below or jump on my Discord. Link is in the description for that. And anybody there will be more than happy to help you out. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching. And I will see you all next time. Thanks.